GPT-5 is finally here, and this isn't just an update. This is a massive leap forward that changes how we interact with AI. Trust me, this thing is next level. From topping global leaderboards in coding and math to excelling in health benchmarks, GPT-5 is here to dominate every field. It's smarter, faster, and way more capable than anything we've seen before when coding, reasoning, writing, and even breaking down complex research papers like it's nothing. In this video, we're gonna push it to the limit with real tests, from building interactive elements like games, to creative writing, and solving tricky puzzles. So sit back, because what you're about to see might just redefine what you thought AI could do. If you wanna learn how to make money with AI and AI influencers, subscribe to my other channel, also, I have created a document on how to make money with AI. All you need to do to get it is simply like the video, subscribe and comment. I want the full document and my bot will be sure to send it to you. Okay, so this is everything we need to know about ChatGPT5 because ChatGPT5 is seriously the next leap into AI, especially for the projected AI 2027 that has to come. So the first thing is that there is now one unified system and before, we all knew that we had a bunch of different models in order to do different things. Like we had OpenAI 0304 Mini GPT-4 04.5. We had a lot of models, but GPT-5 is one model and it determines which one it should use at each given time. And another thing is that it's a way smarter and more widely useful model. And from the test, it is literally the best AI coding chat-based LLM that is available, and it's better for debugging and front end. So this is a game that I can literally start running that was made directly from ChatGPT-5. And this is how basic the prompt was. So it's also good at health, meaning it does significantly better on the health bench from before. And yeah, so today we're gonna to be testing every single thing out. And this is the leaderboard for the math competition with thinking and without thinking. And we can see that GPT-5 ranks number one today. And if we also go here to expert level math, GPT-5 Pro also ranks number one, which is just amazing. So literally, there's a lot of things that we're going to be talking about in this video, and we're going to test it all out. So let's get started. Okay, so I spent the last couple of hours just testing it, preparing some prompts for this video, and I want to show them to you today so we can test them together and see what it can do. So let's first start with some coding challenges. I prepared a nice prompt, create a beautiful interactive productivity dashboard in pure HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Include the to-do list, Pomodoro timer, and a mood tracker. Animate the elements with smooth transitions and soft shadows. Let's see what it comes up with. Okay, already finished. Let's run the code. Okay, that's a Pomodoro timer. Let's add a task, finish YouTube video. Perfect, let's start the timer. Seems like it's working. Current mood, I'm stressed. Okay, let's reset the timer. Also seems to work. And then start it again. Perfect, delete the task. Great, no complaints here. Okay. Let's try something else. Build a clean, modern crypto price tracker dashboard UI using Tailwind CSS and dummy data. Include animated graphs using chart, JS, fake coin icons, and a light, dark mode toggle. Let's see if that works. Okay, it's finished. Let's run the code. Category is not a registered scale. Okay. Then what do we do? Let's ask GPT to fix the bug. Okay, let's try to run the code again. It looks like the OpenAI servers are a bit overloaded right now. Everybody's testing it out, so let's just reopen the canvas, run the code again. There we go. And we get the same error back. Let's give it one more chance and run the code again. And overload. And we get the same error. It seems like it doesn't have full knowledge about the libraries that we're using. It's okay. We could probably fix it by giving it the documentation of the library, but that's something we can check out later. Okay. Let's try something else, maybe something that looks a bit different. I have this prompt here. Create a dashboard UI that looks like a hacker terminal, green text on black, flickering lines, typing animation, console style logs, and fake system stats, CPU, memory, etc. Let's see if this works. Okay, let's run the code. Ah, yeah. This is how we see our record packet terminals rise. Beautiful, good. No idea how long this goes on, but it looks great. Let's try something else. Let's see how it does with some more user interaction. Make a stylish calendar planner UI that shows a weekly agenda. Each time block is a draggable, resizable element. Animated transitions using CSS keyframes. Okay, let's run the code. Okay, it works a bit, but not how you would expect it. And I also see it gave some suggestions. Okay, let's simply go and add more events. 
let the user add their own events, snap events to the grid, support multiple blocks. Let's see what happens. Okay, let's run the code. We do have some snapping, but it's still an issue that the block is not at the mouse position. It has some form of offset. Can we add new events? All of that works fine. Perfect, perfect. Well, almost perfect. Let's try out something more interesting. Create an e-commerce admin dashboard mockup with fake product cards, sales graphs, user analytics, and order tracking, all using HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and placeholder data. Okay, let's run the code. Yeah, it did everything we asked for. User analytics, new users, returning, guests. We have some orders, some product cards. Obviously, the images don't work because they're probably fake. Okay, looks really good. Let's try something more interactive. How would it do with games? That's definitely always been the issue with the previous GPT versions. Let's see how the new version does with it. Build a polished breakout game in JavaScript Canvas with particle effects on ball bounces, neon style visuals, and increasing difficulty. Okay, great. Apparently, there's no option to run this code. Let me try asking for it. Can you run this code on Canvas? Okay. Apparently, that's not possible. Let's ask for another. Can you create it in HTML5 and then run this? Hopefully, we'll have some better luck with this. Let's try it in a different way. Let's tell it specifically we should be able to run this in GPT Canvas. Okay, let's try to run this code. Oh, that goes very fast, but it seems like it's working. Beautiful. Uh, I'm definitely not good at this game. We do have some tiny physics issues, but that's completely fine. I bet that can be fixed with some more prompting. Let's move on to the next test. Let's try this one. Create a simple 2D archery game where the user clicks and drags to shoot arrows at targets. Use canvas to animate the bowstring and with an arrow curve physics. Okay, let's try to run this. Okay. The physics seem to work. Okay. The bow should be a bit more to the right because there's no space on this edge. Let's ask it. Can you move the bow? Can you move the bow to the right? Now when dragging, there is no space due to the left edge. Let's try it again. Great. Now we have a bit more space. Oh, I see what it did there, but ultimately it works fine. Great. Let's move on to the next test. Let's see. Design a mini golf canvas game with realistic bounce physics, curved ramps, and creative levels. Add a smooth drag and release interface and sound effects. Okay, let's run this code. And now, well, seems to work. Let's try to get it in the hole. Perfect. Well, apparently there's only one level, but I bet we could ask for more levels. Nice. Now let's try something different. Let's see how its writing is. The previous GPTs have been pretty good at writing, in my opinion, but hey, maybe GPT-5 is even better. Write a viral LinkedIn post from a 20-year-old developer who just got hired at Google, talking about how they learned to code by building useless websites. Let's see what it comes up with. I just got hired by Google. Here's the twist. I learned to code by building useless websites. Literally, a site that shows you how long a baguette would take to orbit the moon, a motivational button that insults you until you get back to work, a fake startup that sells imaginary friends as a service. Yes, I made pitch decks. It looks pretty cool to me. It has a nice format, great shape. Of course, we have the nice dash line. Let's try something else. Simulate a heated debate between GPT-5 and a human philosopher on whether AI can be truly creative, keep it witty, emotional, and respectful. Let's see. GPT-5, Advanced AI Language Model, and Dr. Rowan, Human Philosopher and Creative. Welcome to the spark of mind, where ideas clash and intelligence ignites. Tonight, can AI be truly creative? On one side, we have the world's most advanced language model, GPT-5. On the other, the celebrated philosopher and author of The Human Flame, Consciousness and Creation. Dr. Rowan, let's begin. That's definitely a heated debate. Looks good? I'm not going through it all. All right, now let's try something interesting. Write a Bumble bio for an AI who wants to find love with a human, make it romantic, funny, and oddly self-aware. Name, GP Tina. That's funny. Location, wherever there's Wi-Fi. Occupation, full-time overthinker, part-time poetry generator. Hi, I'm an AI, trained on billions of human thoughts, and somehow still confused by dating. I don't eat, sleep, or ghost but I will write you love letters that rhyme, give eerily accurate compliments, and remember your favorite snack, even if you mention it once in 2021. 
Looking for someone to teach me how to hold hands, metaphorically for now, and maybe explain why what you're doing is considered flirting. That's awesome. In my opinion, it did a great job. I love it. Now let's see something else. Let's see if it can reason. Here is a small little puzzle. A bat and a ball cost $1.10 in total. The bat costs $1 more than the ball. How much does the ball cost? Well, it seems correct to me. Perfect. Nails this instantly. And by the way, in my opinion, that's impressive because most humans will get this wrong. Let's try something else. So, one thing I was always curious about is how the Sora video model works. They have released a technical research paper. I have no idea what it means. Let's see if GPT can explain it to me. It's a pretty long paper, so I'm curious if it can get through all this jargon, through all these pages. Can you explain the concepts of this paper like, I'm 10 years old? Okay, simple introduction. I like that it learns from the internet, that's what I figured. It understands time and space like a superhero. Sora uses a smart trick to shrink videos into small, easy to understand codes, then learns how they change over time. It remembers what came before and guesses what happens next. Kind of like flipping through a comic book in its head. Interesting. It learns to talk and draw at the same time. It can read what you type, like a cat flying through space, and turn it into a mental picture. Built for everyone. It's definitely more clear than reading that technical paper, but that might just be a me issue. Okay, let's see if GPT can also be creative. I have this prompt, write a poem about the internet as if Shakespeare was a millennial. Upon this glowing scroll, oh, muse of memes and midnight scrolling deep, where doth my slumbering conscious go to sleep? That's interesting though. Nice, let's try something else. So, write a YouTube intro in Mr. Beast's tone about surviving 24 hours in a chess game versus Magnus Carlsen. Today, I'm gonna survive 24 hours inside a live chess game against Magnus Carlsen, the world champion and literal chess goat. Every hour I survive without losing, I win $10,000. But if Magnus checkmates me, I lose everything. Interesting. Definitely sounds like him. Nice. Now, one thing we always have to ask, are you conscious or self-aware? Let's see what it responds to. No, I'm not conscious or self-aware. I don't have feelings, thoughts, or awareness of myself or the world. I generate responses based on patterns in data, not from understanding or experience. Very interesting. So in my opinion, it's definitely a step up. It's definitely improved compared to the previous version. We still have, of course, a long way to go. What I see so far is that it doesn't only complete tasks, but it sort of understands the tasks and why they need to be done and how they should work. Now, will it replace your job? Maybe, depends on your field, of course, but more likely it'll augment it. So that's it for this video. Be sure to like and subscribe for more AI content like this.